allow me to take off my mask. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is David Luaga, Joanne's brother. Um, we also have a sister, Debbie Luaga, who lives in the United States of America in Chicago, but is unable to be with us today. But I will be sharing her speech with me. Um, it's with me, so I'll be sharing her speech. Um, Joshua Senyonga and Joanne Senyonga. I think we should add a Luaga in there. <laughs> I was trying to negotiate to Joanne. Maybe we could try Joanne Luaga Senyonga or Joanne Senyonga Luaga. But, Biagane. <sighs> Josh. <laughs> I need to come for lessons. Joanne, no way, I've been David Ward, you. But anyway, Joshua and Joanne Senyonga. Her Royal Highness, the Navagetica. The princes, Princess Katrina, Pastors Jackson and Eve Senyonga, Bishop Godfrey Luaga, um, Pastor Sylvia Luaga, Pastors, Bishops, all protocol observed, ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening. My speech today will not be sharing Joanne's past because I don't think she's going to die or she's going to leave me. I think on such a day I would like to share um, a few things on the journey that they're going to take. And with the little knowledge I have, I'll try. Um, what an honor to stand before you on this rather memorable day. This is indeed the day the Lord has made and we shall be glad and rejoice in it. I officially got to know of this love story a little over a year when it had begun. This is about four years ago, three years to be particular. I kept on seeing someone called Eggy um, on, Joanne's, on Joanne's phone. So I said, who is this guy? Who is this person? Who is called Eggy? So I, if, if you can remember Joanne's vow, she said someone who has Josh's head. So um, she said, jo uh, I wondered who it was. I didn't know this would be the birth of a great union. Joanne and Josh are inseparable. They have been through it and they love each other without a doubt. If you want to prove what love is, ask Joanne and Josh. Even if there's an ant crossing, Joanne will call Josh. Even if there's a mosquito in the air, Gambabana it could be Josh. So jo Joanne and Josh, Joanne will leave you here. You, you say, didn't wear a mask, Joanne will call Josh to tell David to wear a mask. That's how much Joanne is comfortable and is, you know, secure around Joshua. Thank you for that. Thank you for making my sister secure and comfortable with you. We won't go into details because of the time, but Joshua, I'd like to first of all thank you for keeping your word. When Joshua met Joanne, from the little I know, he told her, I don't have time to play around. If we are together, it's to get married. Thank you for keeping your word. Thank you for being patient with Joanne. Thank you for deciding to love her besides her shortcomings, for listening to her, for caring for her, where I didn't. Thank you for making the decision to honor her and marrying her in the best way possible. Joanne, thank you for choosing Joshua, your soulmate, your husband now. Thank you for being patient with him. Thank you for teaching him how to dress. Thank you for listening to him, for honoring him before God. Thank you so much. When, when Joanne met Joshua, Joshua liked shimmer, shiny um, suits. Uh, hi, you know, hi, he, he, he's, he's a flash, he liked the flash. No, maybe, maybe not. He's, I don't know if he's still flashy, but he liked, he liked the, you know, to be the attention, um, and Joanne called and said, Eva Nag, Simani Chokwan Balachino to Genda Chikola to Tia. But those in Gatomuji Daba, yeo, eh? But Joshua and Joanne, you have made the decision to be together 
with no coercement at all. You've had all the time in the world to think through this decision. A decision that you have to stick to, not going back to Matuka. Marriage is the only institution where you get a diploma, you get the certificate before studying one thing. Today, you're joining, I don't know, um, the, probably the greatest union till Jesus comes back. Marriage is a partnership, not a one-man job. For your marriage to work, you need to work together for a common goal, for a common purpose. With any partnership, business, marriage, church, any cooperation to work, you have to listen to each other. You have to forgive each other. You have to work with each other. You have to pray with each other and progress together. Not one going ahead and leaving the other behind. You have to move as a union. When the babies cry, Joshua, you need to wake up. When, the, uh, when it's time to cook, the chapatis, you need to learn, Joshua, to take turns. And Joanne, when it's time to close the Colgate lead, you need to do that as well. Be a team. You have, you have not hired, Joshua, you have not hired a mate. You have, had a, you have married a wife. Your marriage will be easier for you if you both understand your responsibilities. If, Josh, you understand your responsibility as a man in your marriage, and Joanne, you understand your responsibility as a woman, your partnership is going to be excellent. When God created mankind, he devised methods in which he can bless them. And when Joshua and Joshua, you have received a new portal for God's blessing, and Joanne, you too have received a new portal for God's blessing. When God is blessing people, he can bless them through their work, he can bless them through their wife, he can bless them through their children. And today, Joshua, God can bless you through Joanne. And Joshua, Joanne, God can bless you through Joshua. So you need to treasure yourself. You need to take good care of the blessing that God has given you so that it will not, be, it will not, plan, um, it will not fade, but it will last forever. How you can maintain the blessing is at your discretion. You have to remain faithful to your word. And you can read this in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7. And because my brother-in-law is a pastor, please, please read 1 Timothy chapter 1. I mean, 1 Timothy 3. You understand the role as an overseer in your family. While we grow, our parents try, the, our parents try their best to groom us. Mrs. Luwaga will always sit us down and tell us and tell us and tell us. And she would every day, early in the morning, 6, p 6 a.m., and she say, come and listen to what I have to say. Today, Joshua is from a different background. Joanne is from a different background with different home trainings. But you have become one with love in the middle. This comes patience, um, consistency, love, everything that comes along that can help you endure any challenge. And the challenges that come to be, be, be with you, only the Holy Spirit can teach you to work this marriage. It's not a shoe that one size fits all. Only the Holy Spirit can teach you how to work your marriage. People will tell you, do this and your husband will love you more. You can buy herbs and you know your marriage will last longer. Your husband will love you more. Do this and do that. We have seen people do it all. They have bought the herbs. They have gone east to west. They have gone up and down and their marriages have failed. But only the Holy Spirit can uphold a marriage. And what happened to others? will not happen to you if you allow the Holy Spirit to work within you and through you. When people speak, they tend to tell women, do this and do that. And they tell us the men very little to know about marriage. I'm not married, but the little I know about society is that everybody needs value. Be humble, be willing to learn, be willing to correct each other. Learn from your mistakes. Don't be quick to anger. Love is, love is a decision. Much as you choose to hate, you can choose to love. Love your imperfections. Compliment each other. Work as a team. You have been joined together to perfect each other. Where Josh can, Joanne, you can. Where one can't be, the other can. Be present. 
be that keep the fire burning. This love of dancing together, we want to come back 20, 30 years later, and that fire is still burning. Most importantly, have accountability. A man and a woman without accountability is like a blind ship without direction. Get mentors. Get people to correct you genuinely and pour into your lives. People that will walked, people that have walked the journey successfully that you're embarking on. There's a lot to say, but we can't exhaust it all in one go. I might have the opportunity to say this again, so of course I have to take advantage of this. It is my prayer that your marriage works, that your it's not even my prayer, your marriage will work. You will bear fruit and your ministry and in all in your endeavors. You have no pressure to bear children. All these people that are telling you, give birth, give birth. You will have to take your time, make a decision. No one will wake up in the morning after preaching a sermon to change your diapers. You have to take and make correct decisions. It is not without a doubt. God is going to bless you with the fruit of the womb. And take your time. And I wish you a blessed marriage and a fulfilling marriage where you will be happy and enjoy God's purpose for your life. God bless you.